Shalom. I'm Charles Elisha Williams with Yahweh Apostolic Ministries. Our mission is to bring the unadulterated gospel of truth to all nations as it was first preached to Israel on the day of Pentecost. We hope that you will discover some new truth in this video and that it will be a blessing to you. Afterwards, I'll be back with information on how you can contact us. Enjoy. part of the uh, the next teaching on the Hebrew alphabet. Um, this will be part six, uh, and it will be the word letter. Now that looks like Chet, right? But in the Hebrew, it's pronounced Chet. Chet. It's a hard H E sound. The C H is pronounced as a H, a hard H E, a gargle H E. It's Chet. Chet. Real hard to pronounce there. But that's the next letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and we're going to get into this. If my computer is cooperative. Hey, hey. I got to get into the habit of saying that that way myself. I'm used to just looking at it and say Chet, which is the English way of saying it. But right there you see um, the way it's written. Uh, on the right, you have the uh, paleo or the, the pictograph Hebrew, and we'll get into what that looks like in just a moment. Um, we'll get into all that. On the left side, you see the block or the um, right or the, the modern, he, what's called the modern Hebrew. Okay, Chet. Okay, let's go over real quick the. Uh, Previous uh, teachings we did. Just need to move this up just a little bit so I can see the screen. A little bit too far back. Okay, we did Aleph, which was the ox or the strength of the leader. Then we did Bait or the house or in. Gimel, which looks like an L. The Bait looks like a sideways G. The Gimel looks like an L, an outlined L, which means foot or camel or pride. Dalit, which was a, looks like an upside down hat or a door, which means tent door or a pathway. Then we did hey, which looks like a person raising their hands worshiping, which means low or behold. Okay, and then we did wa, which is he, uh, nail or peg or ag. Then we last week, last time we did Zayin, which is the plow or the weapon or so. means to cut off. This week we will do Chet, which is a tent, wall, or a fence, or separation. We're going to get into all those. So Chet is a tent, wall, a fence or separation. Why did I put Johann Sebastian Bach here? Because the word Bach is the way you pronounce the het. It's, the, it's pronounced the same way. Now, interestingly, when I was I was looking this looking up for a, uh, some kind of picture of him. I came across a, a, a quote that he did, which I included in this message, which has nothing to do with the message itself, but I thought it was very interesting what he said. Oh, by the way, he is a um, composer of uh, music. Uh, come on. Okay, he said, the aim and final end of all music should be none other than the glory of Yahweh and the refreshment of the soul. Johann Sebastian Bach. Interestingly, 
the aim of in the final end of all music, it should be to glory uh, nothing other than to glorify Yahweh. The refreshment of the soul. This coming from a composer of um Papa. I'm drawing a blank on the type of music it is. Classical. How about that? Classical music. Classical. Classical music, thank you. My wife knows that and I don't and I like classical music more than she does. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you see here in a blurred uh Look of the morphology of the the uh, bait. I mean that uh, chet. Otherwise, that bait, but chet. The gematria or the number of uh, chet is the number eight, and we will get into that later on today. Also, the pictograph there, which is the uh, oldest uh, Hebrew written. Uh, it looks like a fence, a fence there, and we'll get into that. The Katab Avari is the middle one there. The Katab Ashari, which is the one Messiah would have looked at if he looked at scrolls, unless he's looking at something a little bit older. We're going to get into that later, later on today, towards the end. And, of course, you have the book type or the modern type. Okay, now... I just gave this away, didn't I? What does this letter look like? I just gave it away. A fence. A fence or a wall. Mm -hmm. Something that separates and protects. That's what it looks like. A fence or a wall. Something that separates or protects. Something that separates or protects, like this little baby in the picture. You have a pool in the background, and it looks like an in-ground pool. You wouldn't want that little baby to go, a little toddler to go walking up and fall into the pool and get hurt or possibly drown. So what do you do? You put up a fence to to protect. To surround the, the pool so that child does not fall in. And there's no way that child would climb over the fence, so there's no way for him to get to the fence. There's a separation between him and danger. He like looks like what? Like he that baby. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. That's not a picture of me, believe me. <laughs> Okay, that is not me, that's for sure. I don't have any pictures of me that young. I wish I did. When I was young, I didn't have an in-ground pool. I had an above-ground pool. Okay. okay, I just said this. What is the purpose of the fence? To separate or protect the child. What's this fence for? Protect yourself. <laughs> <laughs> to protect you. Protect us. <laughs> and also to protect the tiger. That's it. Why? Okay. If that tiger was to get, somehow get out of that cage and hurt someone like or bite someone, they would inevitably, inevitably put the, the tiger down. They would mm -hmm. kill the, the tiger. Okay. But that fence, if you're in a zoo, if you're ever in a zoo, you notice they're always behind a fence or some kind of cage. That's to protect you to, and to protect them. It's a separation or a fence to protect. I myself, if I was in a zoo, would be glad that cage was there. <laughs> That guy is a big guy to mess with. Mm -hmm. They're pretty. Yeah, but don't touch them. <laughs> but don't touch them. Mm. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I want to see if somebody will give me an answer. What's the most famous fence in the scriptures? Bible trivia. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is Bible trivia. They're all your version of Bible trivia. One day, one day. 
people of Israel was making a round of uh, of Israel, and then at the seventh round, no, at the seventh round, yeah, they scream, and the post fall down. Okay, that that's a good one, but that, that that's not actually a fence. I'm looking for an actual fence oh. in the scriptures. He's a type of a shadow of a fence. Yes. That's a, that's a New Testament one. I'm looking for something in Old Testament. See why I know. <laughs> well, I, I know because I know this. Yeah, she knows because she. Well, I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't really asking, expecting her answer because I know she knows it because she's seen it, the message. It's two hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not Bible trivia. The fence around the, ark. the tabernacle, the Ooh. ark, the ark of the covenant. We'll get into that a little bit deeper in yeah. just a moment. Well, just a minute or so. So. Okay, you see here, the fence is, is around the tabernacle of Yahweh, okay? As you can see down here on the, um, if I can get my pointer to work right here, you can see, what does this look like? Just the fence, if you look at it straight, if you were looking at it straight, it would look like a het, a right. fence, mm -hmm. something that separates Separates what? The people from the outside of the tabernacle from the inside of the tabernacle. Or the inner, what's called the inner court. I'm going to, um, someday, I think I'm, y'all is going to leave me one day, someday, to revisit the, uh, message the mess series of messages I did on the tabernacle. This picture is one of the pictures I had when I did the message on the tabernacle and the surrounding uh, things around it, all the things that were involved in it. But um, this here is the tabernacle. You see, that, see it in the middle with the coverings and the fence on the outside. Now, what does the fence protect from? Well, it protects the people from the outside with the, from the tabernacle. What does the tabernacle have in it? Yeah. Okay, the outside, the, the um, outer court, what's called the outer court, has the brazen altar and, and all that, which I don't have in this picture, but it does. Uh, the, so what does the tabernacle have? The, the, the tabernacle itself. I'm not talking about the Holy of Holies, I'm talking about the tabernacle. Okay. Right. Well, you, yes it does. It, it has the Ark. Okay. The Ark is not in the Holies of Holies. The Ark of the Covenant is in the Holy of Holies. Okay. What I'm talking about is the, the um, menorah. The table show breads. Okay, now, what else does the tabernacle have in it? The, uh, the, Ark, I know what saying. the Ark of the Covenant. Uh -huh. Okay, what does the Ark of the Covenant have in it? Manna. The ma manna. Uh, the Ten Commandments. The, the table, the, the tablets. Oh. Uh, you said the stick of water. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me the Spanish. No, no, no. <laughs> Aaron's, the Aaron's stick, like it was Moses. No, no, yeah, no, no, Aaron's, Aaron's rod that put it. Rod. Uh, okay, now, interestingly, the word that is used in the Bible in the Old Testament for the walls of the Ark of the Covenant is the word to sell them. The Sila, which is from the Hebrew number 6760. It means a rib as curved, literally of the body. Or it figuratively means of the door, that is, a leaf, or hence a side. So this so what I'm saying here is the same word in the Hebrew, the, the Sila. If that's how it's pronounced, for walls of the covenant, I mean the walls of the Ark of the, the Covenant, is the same word that's used for rib 
Like in the book of Genesis, when he said he took him a rib out of Adam's side and created woman. It's the same Hebrew word. Hallelujah. Okay, now, what is in the Ark of the Covenant? We already just got told, said. Okay, there's the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, the manna, Aaron's rod to bun it, and the tablets of with the commandments on it. That's what's in the Ark of the Covenant. So, let me go back for just a second here. What is the Ark right now? I'm sorry? What is the Ark right now? I do not know. I don't know what the history is on it, if it's been discovered or what. That I can't say. Okay, now, go ahead and I want to go back a little bit to this picture here. Because we see that the uh, fence protects the people that are on the outside of the uh, tabernacle. From the tabernacle, tabernacle itself. Okay, around the, um, you can't see it in this picture, but, well, you see a little bit in the top right there. Tents. On the north, south, east, and west sides, there was three, on each side, there was three uh, tribes in on that side. Oh, yeah, right. Okay? There was three tribes. Uh, I don't know if I have the names of the tribes. I know I have them at home. Um, but um, each one had three tribes on each side of it. So what, so what significance is this? Okay. He's protected. The the okay, the very presence of Yahweh in the Holy of Holies is protected. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says he cannot come into the presence of Yahweh or you would die. As a matter of fact, in the scriptures, and I don't have the scripture reference for it. But they would put little bells on the bottom of the priests that went into the Holy of Holies. They didn't hear the bells ringing. They knew that priest died and they had ropes tied to them. And they would pull them out of the, the Holy of Holies. Now, what I don't have, there's no scripture references saying one of them did die in the Holy of Holies, but that's the way they did it. Because that way, because if they were unholy, if there was something unholy in their life, they would, would pull them out of the Holy Holies. They couldn't go into the Holy Holies to get them, lest they would die. Okay? So the, the very presence of Yahweh is protected in three different ways, or four different ways, I'm sorry. Okay? First of all, it's protected by the walls of the Ark of the Covenant itself. Okay? It's protected by that. Okay, here you go. This is what I want to get to here. Okay? It's protected first by the walls of the Ark of the Covenant, which is the little tan thing there where the number one is at. This is where the first one. The second place where it's protected and you're going to see in this all the the term that's used, separation, or fence, or, you know, separation, okay? The first is the walls. The second is the curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the, uh, the holy place. There was a curtain that was put up. And that the priest would go through that curtain into the Holy of Holies. Okay? But no one else could enter in there. Okay? So that curtain was a second separation. You want to know the tribe? It was around the, 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 the tabernacle? What are they? I know, I know, I can, I know what they are, but oh. I don't know which ones are where. That's the thing. On the north side was the tribe of Dan. On the south side was the tribe of Reuben. On the east side was the tribe of Judah. On the west side was the tribe of Ephraim. 
Ephraim. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Was like, okay. Wow, the one can get it that easy. Protect the Bayao also with the tribes around there. Right, but all the tribes surrounded the, the uh, tabernacle. Wow. There was twelve tribes actually. That's the that's mm-hmm. three. That's four of them. That was mm-hmm. four. Yeah, there's tw- actually twelve tribes. There's yeah. three on each side. Mm-hmm. Okay, but we'll get into that later on. Okay, the third um, protection for the Holy of Holies, for the Ark of the Covenant, was the curtain that surrounded the holy place. There was all, all the way around the holy place. Okay, the, which, when, you, when you're in the outer court, you go through that curtain, you go into the holy place. Yeah. And, and the priests go in there and do the offerings and, and things. Nobody else does that. Priests can go there, right? Mm-hmm. Right, right. Okay, the, then you have the fourth one is the outside curtain, which we saw in the, in the first picture of the tabernacle. That curtain that went all the way around, all the way around the, the tabernacle. And it, what did it do? It separated the the tabernacle itself from the people, the people that were around it. Now this, okay, okay, this here, let me see, okay, now this is a beautiful type and a shadow of us today. You see, we start on the outside of the fence, the het, the outside of the het, of protection. And we come closer to Yahweh until finally one day we're in his presence in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have an incomplete sentence in my, my PowerPoint there, but you know what I'm saying. Until one day we're in the his presence in heaven. Hallelujah. You see, once at one time we were lost and dying and going to a devil's Hell. But we slowly made that walk from the outside of the tribes, so to speak, from the outside, even further out than what the tribes were, to the tribes, to the court, the, the court, the, the outer court, to the holy place. And finally, when we make heaven our home, we'll be in the very presence Hallelujah. of Yahweh. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful type in the shadow, but the fence, a fence, a curtain, is a separation or a protection. The first letter, letter I thought this was interesting. Let me go back, step back here for a second. The first letter of your Bible. And you can see it there on the left. We've done that letter as bait. The last letter in the Bible. I mean, I'm not the Bible. I'm sorry. The Torah. Okay, catch this. I thought this was very interesting. The first letter in the Bible is bait. It, it's not Aleph. It's bait. Because Aleph is a silent letter. But it's bait. Okay? The last letter in the Torah the first five books, okay, the last letter in the Torah is Lamed. Okay? These two letters together are the word Led in the Hebrew. Okay? So, Beit and Lamed together is the word Led. What is Led? Led, this is the Hebrew word for heart. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that interesting? The Torah is surrounded by the heart of Yahweh. Hallelujah. The heart of Yahweh is the Torah. Hallelujah. It's right here. Makes sense. Makes sense. Hallelujah. That was beautiful. Why does Yahweh need to be protected? Yahweh don't need to be protected, does he? No. He don't need a, 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 a group of people like the president does, just surrounded with a, or surrounded around them with guns no. to protect them. Yahweh is Yahweh. He don't need protection. Amen. We're the 
ones who need the protection. Amen. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. We need his protection. He don't need ours. Amen. That's true. In the Garden of Adam, uh, Garden of uh, Garden of Eden, I almost said Adam. The Garden of Eden. You had Adam and Eve in the garden. Whoops! Okay, I thought I had some writing in there. Mm. The Garden of Eden. Let me ask you, was there a fence around the Garden of Eden? Mm -hmm. No, there was no. not. There was no fence around the Garden of Eden. It was like trees around. But well, but he the, used to like a fence for them. Yeah. No? no, there was never any fence around the Garden of Eden. Not physical fence. Where was that? Okay, as you can see, there was, there, there was no fence at all. Okay? Now... When Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden, was there a fence put up? Technically, yes, there was. There was two, the Bible says that there was two flaming angels put at the entrance of the uh, Garden of Eden to protect it, yes. That's why I say it was fence, because when they was trying out, it was two angels outside. It was put in after there was thrown out of the east. Yes, it was, it was uh, put there after. after. Okay. Yeah, the two angels were put there after they were expelled from the Garden of Eden because Yahweh didn't want them to enter back into the Garden of Eden. Okay? There was a separation. A separation why? A separation because of sin. There was a separation or a fence put up for their protection and Yah the protection of Yahweh and his eat in the garden. Okay? There was that separation put up. I'm going to keep saying that, a separation or a fence because that's what this letter is. That's what the letter heck is. A separation. A fence. We can see here a fence. Okay? It looks like the work, the, the, uh, the letter Chet. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Now, this letter Chet looks like a fence. What does it also look like? I just gave it away. A scroll. A, a Bible scroll. It's shaped the same exact way. The Torah scroll. The Torah scrolls is a type and a shadow of Yahweh's word, a fence surrounding the heart of Yahweh, the Ark of the Covenant, with only one way in, the East Gate. There's a significance to that, the East Gate. You, did, you didn't... Couldn't really tell well, on the other graphic you might have told, been able to see that there was only one entrance right. to the tabernacle, and that was where the east gate was, or the east curtain was. There was only one way in. That's what the Torah scrolls are. The Torah scrolls are a type and a shadow of that that uh, fence or that that fence going all the way around the tabernacle. To protect the tabernacle from the people on the outside. It surrounds the heart of Yahweh with only one way in. This is all about the gospel and Yahweh Messiah. Because he was tabernacled in flesh. Amen. It's all about the gospel. The gospel is the, 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 the whole thing is wrapped around the gospel and Yahweh. John 14, chapter 14, verse 6. We're going to get into a couple of scriptures here. Okay. Yahweh Messiah said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You catch that? The east gate. He is that east gate. 
He is at East Gate of the Tabernacle. He is at East Gate. There's only the Bible says it. There's only one way in, and that's yes. through Him. Yes. We can't get go in any other way. There's no other way to be saved. Yeah, right. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, he said in, in John chapter 10, verse 1. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you, he catch this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entered not by the door, Yahweh Messiah, into the sheepfold, the tabernacle, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. You catch that. If we don't come in by the door, Yahweh Messiah, into the sheepfold, salvation, the tabernacle, the gospel, and we try to come in any other way, where is a thief and a robber? Wow. How many different religions out there do we have? More than a thousand, more than a thousand different religions. How many different ones? are coming in differently than what the word says. Oh my. What's the scripture say here? They're coming in some other way. They're as a thief and a robber. Am I saying that they're, they're dying and going to a devil's hell? No, I'm not saying that. Yahweh is merciful. Yahweh will bring them to a knowledge of the truth, hopefully. Amen. Wow. But I know John chapter 10, verse 1, what 10 word 1 says. Okay, let's go over some, uh, some het words. I still got to get used to that. Het. The next layer is easy. Yeah. You'll see what it is, but <laughs> well, you have, if you have your paper, you'll see what it is. A lot easier than het. What are some... Het words. The he a hedge. It means a hedge. You'll, you're going to see similarities in these words. Het words. Hedge. A, a fence. Het. A wall. A boundary. Is there a similarity here? Or is it me? A chamber. To unite, to bind, or to wrap. With the tabernacle, wasn't there a wrapping around the whole tabernacle, the fence? That was a wrap. A chet. I think Rolando is getting a kick out of trying to say that word, <laughs> that letter. Okay, this <laughs> our our uh, graphic here. A fence separates two farms, but it also connects them. Yeah. The fence connects these two farms together. It separates them, so you know one farm from another. Because there's boundaries. There's boundaries. That property, each one of them properties there has a boundary. This property we're living on has a boundary. The fence separates, tells you where your boundary ends on that property. You can't go past that or you're trespassing. Exactly. But then again, this, this, this fence connects the two farms together. You see, it connects us. Okay? You see the, the animals here. You see the fence there on, the, on your, uh, in the middle there, going down the middle of the, the picture. You have to have the fence there. You have to have that separation, that wall there. Or else the, the uh, cows there would go all over the place. They'd be on somebody else's property. That wouldn't make them very happy. Mm -hmm. So you have to have boundaries 
or wall or separation. You see, this here is one of the biggest problems in our society, in our assemblies today. It lacks structure. Our assemblies today don't use Matthew chapter 18, the Matthew chapter 18 principle, when it comes to problem resolve, restitution. Solving problems. The, the assemblies today do not use Matthew chapter 18. I think it's verses 15 through 18, if I'm, if I'm uh, correct. Yeah, fi no, 15 through 17, I'm sorry. Of course, that wouldn't apply to the society itself because the society, the society is in under the biblical structure. But the assemblies today need to use Matthew chapter 18 principle. Let's get into the number 8. Whoops, my thing jumped back on me. There you go. Okay, the number 8, okay? The number 4 denotes earth and creation. That's when the earth was created. Okay, no, the, uh, number, uh, the number four. The number eight is twice as much as the number four. Now there's a startling revelation for you. Two times four is eight. You can go to people and say, hey, I, in my service, I learned it two times four. Eight is twice as much as four. Okay, they look at you like you're crazy. Of course you should know that. But what does... The number eight is twice as much as four. What is it, though? It's connected to the new earth, new creation, or new beginnings. That picture there is actually a picture of the earth from space. So the number eight is connected to the new earth, new creation, and new beginnings. What are some eights in the Bible? Some eights in the scriptures. Well, circumcision yeah. is performed on the eighth day. Circumcision. Okay? In the book of Genesis, eight souls were saved during the flood. There's eight souls. Yahweh reaffirmed his covenant eight times to Abraham. Okay? Eight times. Oops! And that's not supposed to be there. You already know that one. That one is supposed to be David was the eighth son of Jesse. We already know eight souls were saved by the, at the flood. Okay, that was my mistake. Okay, that should say David was the eighth son of Jesse. I'm going to turn my page just in case there's another mistake I made there. <laughs> son of who, Jesse? Mm -hmm. Jesse, yeah. Okay. Oops, there it is. David was the eighth son of Jesse. How about that? It's on the next screen. Okay. Okay. And also, Sukkot. The Feast of Sukkot was an eight-day festival. Sukkot was an eight-day festival. So that's some of the significance of the eight in the Bible, in the scriptures. I'm trying to get out of the habit of saying the Bible. It's oh, the scriptures. That's the number of okay. Well, you know what? One more thing. The eight, number eight, no, never happened. Yeah. Never end. It's infinity. Infinity, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're, you're correct. Mm -hmm. We're, I'm going to get into that in just a couple minutes oh, yeah. here. Yeah. The Bible talk about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not that in particular, but I'm going to get into the eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are some other <laughs> words? Okay. This is going to be fun. Chaim. <laughs> Or life. If you need this list, I can give them to you later on. 
Okay? Chaya. Chaya. Or living. You can see some some um some similarities in these words too. Hasut. Hasut. Or it means devotion of your life. Yeah, Hasidou. Told you I was going to have fun trying to do these. Mm. Marika can say. Chayim. That's easy. That one means life. Oh, hey, yes it is. I goofed up there. I knew it. it looked familiar. Chokama, which means wisdom. Chokamah. Oh, yeah, give me Chokamah. Chokamah. That's what Solomon asked for. Chokamah. Chokamah. I like it. This is one of the tougher letters to say because of the uh, gargled H E sound in it. Chavara. Which means community. Chavara. Choet, which means bosom. Bosom. Choet. Cho. Bosom. Bosom. Cho. Like Job, but cho. Okay? What's some more? Chen. Grace. Chen is grace. Het, which is a fence or a wall, which we already have said. Het. Chanam means free, without cost. Chanam. Next Saturday, you're going to, next about Shabbat, you're going to be all tested on these all these words here. So, <laughs> I'm kidding. Chaviar. Which means friend. Ha, I'm sorry, Havar. 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 Chesed. Or mercy. Chesed. Chadar. Which means enclosure or a chamber. Chata. Which means sin. Chata. Chata. Sin. Chata. Which means hidden. Chata. And Chata. Which means to cherish. Hallelujah. Chabab. That's another uh, way to know that in Hebrew, it's not every gay. They, they use CH to pronounce like a gay. Yeah, CH is pronounced like the, a hard H sound, mm -hmm. the H E sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chabab. Chab, which is a legal binding. Chab. Chabel means rope, bind with a pledge. Chabed. I'm sorry, chabel. Not chabed. Chabed is church. Chabel is rope or to bind with a pledge. Chabak, which means to embrace. Chabak. And chabar, which means to unite. Chabar. Okay, let's get into some other het words. These will be a little bit easier, I hope. Some other Hebrew words, some other words you use het in them is brother. Refuge or trust to fall silent or 
Be still. Companion, like brother or companion. Got some other <laughs> words. Okay. Now, of course, we see the um, all these <laughs> words here. I went back too fast. There's all. There, you read them all. If I was to give you the list, you'll see the, the the similarities in all these these words. Okay. These other words: brother, trust, fall silent, and companion. Okay. They're all just other <laughs> words. Okay. Now I said I was going to get into this here, and this is where my pointer is going to come in, hopefully. Okay. I know this is a blurred version of this. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, I knew that was going to happen. Okay, now, here you go. The letter Chet. This is the um, Gatal Ashari. This is the one that Messiah would have seen. Okay, I know the, the picture is a little blurred. I'm sorry about that. I tried to blur, blow the uh, blow it up, and it, it blurred it even worse. Okay? We see here that the Chet is a Zayin. It's the letter Zayin and the letter Vav. Okay, and what are they? What are they connected to? Connected with? Look at this right here. A yoke. They're connected by a yoke. The Zayin and the Vav are connected by a yoke. It's not the the Zayin and Va. The Zayin and Vav or Wa. It's actually not Vav. It's W A W. It's Wa. Wa. I, I say I say Vav because it has Vav there, but it's Wa. W A W. But it's Zayin and Wa, and it's connected by the yoke. What is it? The crowned man with the sword of the spirit. And who is that? Yeah, That's see. Yahweh Messiah. Yahweh Messiah and the Holy Spirit is equal to the fence of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, Luke chapter 13 verse 24 says to strive to enter in the straight gate. For many I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Wasn't there a scripture earlier that said straight is the way and narrow is the gate and few, or I might not have quoted that, few that enter therein. There's a straight gate that we have to enter into. There's only one way in and one way out. One way in. I'm not going to say one way out. One way in. We, once we go in, we don't want to get out. No. Hopefully not anyway. No way out after. <laughs> after you go in. It's funny how there's a straight gate, a straight way, a straight and narrow path to Yahweh. But there's many people that try to take other paths to get to Yahweh. Where they, they end up, that's between them and Yahweh. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. The scriptures say, For he is our peace, Yahweh is our peace, who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition for us. Amen. Let me explain that a little bit. He's our peace, who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of of partition between us. What is that middle wall? That's the that's folks is the wall. And again, I'll get into this when we get into the tabernacle teachings in the future. 
That is that veil that was rent between the whole, the, mo the holy place and the most holy, the holy of holies. If you read the scriptures, there was no doubt that was the re representation of Yahweh separating us from Him. You know why? Because that that veil wasn't rent, wasn't ripped by human hands. Because it, it was rent from top, according to Scripture, top to bottom. Only Yahweh could have torn it from top to bottom. And it says when Messiah died, that that veil was rent. That middle partition, that middle wall partition was ripped, was taken down so that we could enter into his presence. Hallelujah. Between him and us, that partition was, the wall partition was taken down. The northern tribe, okay, this is going to get into something else. Uh, the northern tribe, which is Ephraim, Ephraim, and the southern tribe, Ooh. Judah, Okay, now those two tribes might be backwards up there. Judah might be the northern tribe. I don't remember. I put it in there like that, and then I realized I maybe should have checked that first. But, okay, they were separated. They were separated. But Yahweh will one day bring those two tribes together and once again unite them into one tribe. You see, the, the kingdom was separated into two, the northern and the southern tribes. One day, Yahweh is going to bring them tribes together as one tribe. The northern tribe was the Levi. I'm sorry? The northern tribe was Dan. The Levi? Uh, the Dan. Okay, the, the well, one of the, the, the northern tribes was Ephraim, and the other, one of the southern tribes was uh, Judah. Uh -huh. there, remember, there was three tribes on each side of the um, oh, yeah, tabernacle. Yeah. It wasn't just those, it was, there was others. Three, there was three, six, nine, twelve. It was twelve tribes. There's three on each side of the tabernacle. Okay? What does the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 say? This is the most misquoted uh, scripture in the Bible, by the way. And I'll get into this, what I guess, maybe later on or something. We'll see. But um, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Knowledge. And what communion hath light with darkness? Be un, un, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Okay? That this, this here is a uh, misquoted scripture in the, in, the, in the word, but I'm not going to get into it. But we have to be yoked together as one. Husband and wife need to be together, yoked together as one. The Bible says that these two shall uh, leave their father and mother and be joined unto their wife. They two shall be one. Okay? Now, this isn't a husband and wife here. <laughs> that did not look right when I did that. Wow. I looked at him like. Yeah, I, I, um, I messed up there. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was doing this, I looked at this multiple times, and I just didn't come to me. What I did? That's wow! My representation of a couple. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's continue on here. Let's try to continue on. The um. <laughs> Yeah, I was funny to the yellow. The um, the two oxen here that are. They're, what are they? They're yoked together. Let me get my little pointer here. This here. Okay? This thing around their necks. Okay? They're yoked together with a piece of wood. Now, in this here, and in the next picture I'm going to show you, they're yoked together with a piece of wood, and it's something that goes down like that. That In the scriptures, that's not how it was. In the Bible... In the Word, in the Old Testament, when they were yoked together, it was something similar to this. But when it was a, a yoke, it was a sideways figure eight, like this. Oh, and yeah, around so each side, the, yeah, each side, the round part went around each one of the yoke. It was an eight, a figure, a sideways figure eight. Go figure, in the, in the scriptures, 
that a yoke that het would be a figure eight. Interesting. The number eight. So if we were to take this yoke of oxen out of the uh, the the thing here. This is what similar something similar to what you'd see. Now this is a modern day picture, of course. Like I said, the the, the Old Testament it would have been a a, um, a yoke would have been like a figure eight in this, in there. The number eight, right there. The number eight. Well, kind of, but but that is what a yoke looks like in the modern day. People nowadays they they yoke their oxen together. Why? Why? Because you need them two oxen to work together. If you don't have the two oxen working together, then you're not ever going to get a, a field plow. If you didn't have this uh, this uh, yoke around their necks, you just had them loose, they would go their own way. And you'd have a mess when you're trying to plow your fields. So they had to keep the two oxen yoked together with this. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, and it's in also in other places in the New Testament, it's quoted from here. It said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. You see, that's from the beginning, from the book of Genesis, it was always meant to be a husband would leave his family and be cleaved unto his wife. He'd be joined unto his wife and they too would be one flesh from the beginning of time. Now, it's so perverted. It's man, it says a man, uh, the way they would quote it now is totally different. A man would uh, cleave unto another man or a woman unto another woman. That wasn't the way it was in the, in the scriptures. That was not the way it was. Messiah, uh, Messiah himself requoted requoted that the word to leave our father and mother and cleave unto our wife. We're supposed to be one flesh. Amos chapter three, verse three. Can two walk together? Lest they be agreed. I should have, what I should have did, I should have put that scripture down on this uh, picture here somewhere. Can two, I keep going back to the, the picture right before that. The, uh, in my mind, anyway. Can, can two walk together? Lest they be agreed. If they, these oxen did not, like I said, have that yoke around their necks, they would not walk together. Okay? It's the same thing, biblically speaking. Oxen are a type and a shadow of the assembly. Okay? Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. It says, Come, on, come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly at heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Of course, this is in red, so it's the Messiah speaking. He said to take his yoke upon us. His yoke is easy, and his burden is light. What is the yoke of Messiah? The yoke of Messiah is, is, is instructions that is destined you to, to come into the heart of Yahweh, thus bringing life. It's the instructions of Yahweh, the, Yahweh's instructions that destined us to come into his, the heart of Yahweh, bringing us life. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. It says, for this is the love of Elohim, that we keep his Command. commandments, his Torah, his word, 
And his commandments, his Torah, are not grievous. Interesting. He says, take my yoke upon you. And he says, keep his commandments, his yoke, his commandments. They're not grievous. They're not hard to keep if we're obedient to Yahweh. A yoke in the first century assembly was in Hebrew, it's a Hebrew idiom. It was a Hebrew idiom, which meant it's the instructions of your, your, I should say your rabbi, not you rabbi, your rabbi. The interpretations of the Torah from your rabbi. That's what the yoke was in the Hebrew, it's a Hebrew idiom. The instructions of your rabbi, the interpretations of the Torah from your rabbi. Because in the in the Old Testament, in the, in back then, the instructions were given by the rabbis. Okay. Yeah, whatever, whatever they say, they will say not even read the scripture what the rabbi told them. Right. Okay, we're going to conclude here. What is it, rabbi? Chet. Chet is the letter that both, everybody say chet. Chet. Okay, I, I wasn't going to be the only one that was going to do that. I was going to have you all do that too. Chet is a letter that both separates and Connects. We learned that. We saw that in the in the with the, the fence. Amen. And the yoke. The yoke separated the, the oxen. But it also connected them. The het, it follows the plow. Catch this. Catch this. Remember the last letter, Zion. Yeah. If it that the het follows the plow of the Zion, so the last letter we did, of the spirit, the plow of the spirit, the drills deep into a man and separates even the bone and the marrow. What marrow means? The marrow is the, uh, there's like a layer on the bone. It's, uh, I think a soft tissue, is it? That's that, right. that the, the, the marrow is actually inside the bone. Inside the bone. Yeah. See how much uh, I know about medical, huh? <laughs> 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 Anybody want me to do an operation on it? Bless you. <laughs> That'd be a very scary thing. <laughs> I don't even know the separation between bone and marrow here. The marrow is what's on the inside of the bone. Okay? That, that's interesting then if you think about it like that. The, the chet is the follows the plow, the zayin of the spirit to drill deep into a man. Wow! And separates even the bone oh. and the marrow, the which is the inner layer underneath the bone. Yeah. Hmm. But and you know what? If um, medically speaking, the marrow has water in it. Hmm. Yeah, wow. because when the when, word of the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Because when you look at like when the body is looking for water and it doesn't have it, it goes inside the bone and subtract the water from there. So it might be in the marrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's water inside the bones. Like in, in the marrow is water in there. Because uh, I'm, I was studying about that. Okay. That's interesting. So it, it, it's interesting how Yahweh does it because it's water in there in our physical body. And when you think it's spiritual, it's water. He's, the, he's, the, he's our water. Yeah, yeah the water rep in the spirit, rep in the scripture, represents the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now, it makes things clear. That's interesting, okay? It, it is the defining structure of the temple. Catch this part. It's the defining structure of the temple and our lives that bring us to what? Tet. The next letter we're going to do. Whoa. Tet 
As you can see there, it's the, in the picture graph is on the left and the uh, block is on the right. We'll get into this next time, our next message. Tet. I told you the next one was easier than tet. <laughs> what is tet? Tet is a snake in the basket. What is it? It's the letter of decision. Here it is right here. I get my pointer to work right here. Okay. I need to make my pointer a little bigger so you can see it. But the picture on the left is the snake in the basket. The tet is the letter of decision. Wow. So isn't that interesting? Tet is the defining structure of the temple and our lives as we learned. It's the defining structure. And it brings us to the next letter, which is tet. That snake in the basket. The letter of decisions where we have to make a decision. We have to make the decision. Catch this. Once the sword of the Spirit comes into our life and separates and creates a fence, you need to make a decision. If it's a bad decision, then you'll be stuck in that basket, which is what the letter Tet is. If you make a right decision, then you can go on to the next letter, which is Yod. It's Yod, which is, what is Yod? The right hand of the power of Almighty Yahweh. Wow. They're really connected to one another. Aren't they really connected one to another? I didn't go through the, the whole thing, but keep going here. We can see how good Yahweh is, how knowledgeable, I mean, how all-knowing Yahweh is. He put each letter, one after another, and one letter leads right into the next, and they're all connected together. Yeah. The sword of the spear comes into the life to separate, and they create a fence. You need to make a decision. Wow. If we make a bad decision, we're stuck in that basket with that snake. Mm. That's what Ted is. But it's awesome to think. I mean, we went from Zayim to Het to Tet. To, to no. Yod. I mean, we're not doing them letters, but we're, I mean, you're seeing the connection in between these letters here. Isn't it awesome? Yeah, when you know the meanings, it, are like, it's, it's Yahweh is talking to us. Yeah, right? the, the design like right? is the plow that goes in and separates, separates the bone and the marrow for the next letter, Chet, which is, which is that wall. That, that, that fence that is, is built. That separation. That leads us to the, a decision. We come to that decision. We have to make a decision. We make a right decision, we can go on to the next letter. After that, after Tet, which is Yod, which is awesome because it's the right hand. Yod means the right hand of the power of Almighty Yahweh. The is the is door. Mm hmm Let's come together. We're gonna to sing this. I think part of my message here. Okay, um Okay, I'm gonna say this before we get to that though. Um because I, I did there is part of the message here missing. In my hurry I might have messed up. Um I'm just going to conclude with these two, two statements here. We need to be yoked together as a body of Yahweh. Okay? Unity in a body is a light to the nations. There has to be a unity in the body so we can be a light to the nations. back with information on how you can contact us, support us, and participate in our services. But first of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. 
I hope it's been a blessing to you and that you've gained something from it. If you have any questions or comments about the topic brought forth in today's video, if you would like prayer, or if you would like to get baptized into the name of Yahweh HaMashiach, then please email us at yahwahisalmighty at gmail.com or call us by dialing 713-494-2164. We would love to hear from you. Our services are broadcasted live every Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch these services by going to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Almighty. There, you can subscribe to receive updates of when we upload new videos. Finally, if you would like to support us so you can help us bring this truth you just heard to the world and that you can continue to be edified by what Yahweh gives us through His Word, then please go to bit.ly slash yamdoni or mail your donation to Yahweh Apostolic Ministries, 3534 K Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19134. We would deeply appreciate anything you could give. So until the next time, Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Shalom.